Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the uh, 1st of June, 2012, and this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net speaking. We had a pretty brutal week here. Uh, S&P 500 lost about 3%. The um, uh, semiconductors were down 4.2%. That put them negative on the year now. So um, we've seen all of those gains in the semiconductors uh, evaporate and turn into a negative for the year-to-date column. And we also have that for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I don't talk about the Dow a lot, but it does get a lot of attention. Um, and the DIA is the um, exchange traded fund that represents the Dow Jones. So uh, just a real brutal week and uh, month, uh, you know, a, a tough start to the month, obviously, as well. Uh, the S&P 500 broke this down channel. By the way, we're looking at the uh, Realtick charts here. Um, Realtick.com is the sponsor of this show on Fridays. And uh, I would encourage you to take a look at their uh, trading software analysis tools at uh, Realtick.com. This is the Realtick platform that I use for the uh, charting package, and I get a lot of questions about that. Um, here's what we were looking at: the uh, the market had been rallying, and, and it's kind of interesting that you know only price pays in that, but we had seen the market de uh, declining on increased volume, and as it began to recover, there was the pattern that we look for. Um, that is, the, basically, you know, the the trend, the volume expands in the direction of the trend, and the counter trend movement, whether up or down will typically be lighter or diminishing as it was in this case. Now we're seeing another pickup in volume. So all last year, or the first quarter of this year, we had the market uh, advancing on lighter volume. So I do say only price pays all the time, but it's something you definitely do want to be aware of. Uh, if you look at the um, little bit longer term chart, and this is what we've been talking about, is since those October lows, uh, October of 2011 to the recent to the high this year, we've been monitoring a few things. One, was the uh, volume weighted average price um let's just get rid of these lines and we'll draw them in right now together so here you can see this I've just changed this to the, to the VWAP line and if we draw the line straight across it begins to, to make that uh, uh, line and you can see that the volume weighted average price since October low is 129.43 since the beginning of the year the average price that the S&P 500 has exchanged hands at is 135.32 so we are still up on the year a slight uh, percentage amount for the uh, SPY up 2%, but the average participant uh, is losing money as more volume has occurred at higher prices than it has down here. So we've got uh, this market beyond the um, uh, uh, volume weighted average price since the October lows. That in theory says that the average participant is uh, is now losing money since then. We've also got this 200-day moving average in here. And a lot of people were saying, well, what what's the value of the 200-day moving average? I had this 128.63 that you can see at the bottom uh, of this little table. Some people were saying, well, my software is 128.85. The point is, you know, whether or not it's 20 cents, even 50 cents away from that, it's not an exact precise number that we want to trade around. It's a psychological level more than anything. It's something to be aware of to look for evidence of the possibility of a change in trend because the moving averages often do act as support. We saw though that the 50-day moving average tried to act as support, the 100, the 150, and now the 200-day moving average. Uh, we closed uh, below it for the first time in, well, if we take a look at the 40-week moving average, first time this year basically um, below the 200 day moving average. So um, there's no sign, uh, there's no evidence here that the market is, is turning. This is what we were talking about uh, uh, in the uh, midday video update for subscribers on Alpha Trends is that, you know, we've got a declining volume weighted average price throughout the day. The odds do not favor a turnaround. And we've got, again, a declining five-day moving average. Yesterday, we rallied right up to that level. We had spoken about the importance of uh, really the 130 and a half level and broke down through that. So so this bearish flag here on the daily time frame has uh, kind of completed its uh, or shown that it's it's in progress still. And as far as you know, someone asked me what's the downside target here. Basically, this was the area we were looking for the market to potentially go. Now it doesn't mean it's not going to go lower. This is a level in here. Let's just take a, another look again. Uh, this level has been uh, something we've been looking at because the 200-day moving average is there. It's also a approximately, well, 128.90, a 38.2% retracement 
of this move uh, from the October lows to to where uh, you know the market has uh, has peaked out uh, in in March of this year. So 38.2 percent retracement got it to about 129, but we're still declining. So it wasn't the 38.2 percent that uh, that acted as support. It wasn't the 200-day moving average, and it wasn't the uh, volume weighted average price since October. So the point is with all of these technical indicators we always have to be aware that the first and you know the primary thing we have to be aware of is the price trend and even on a day like today we're, we're you know we're below a declining volume weighted average price even after a gap lower and we're below a declining five day moving average we're below a declining 10 20 and 50 day moving average the overall picture is guilty till proven innocent of course at some point there's going to be a rally there's going to be a bounce we saw that happen in Facebook yesterday that there was a, uh, a bounce as it broke past some resistance yesterday and uh, the volume weighted average price for the day and that's something we talked about in uh, in the in the chat room yesterday at this area um, but the point is you know those bounces will occur but they're not high probability and they're not something you should be looking to hold for for instance Facebook it pretty much rallied just up below that declining five-day moving average and there's still uh, you know no real evidence of any bottom in in, in Facebook as well and I know a lot of people you know have been looking at and trading that um, in the uh the, you know, the bigger level that we've been looking at in the, in the NASDAQ, the Qs, has been this little band of support in here. And, you know, I have to draw not an exact level, but we can see that this 6160-ish uh, 60 had been tested a few times. And then this level here at 6140. So 6140 to 6160 was our band of potential support. Well, the market obviously blew right past that. And we were in an environment of, you know, declining 10, 20, and 50-day moving average. You simply cannot uh, uh, trust these things things that uh, you cannot trust for the market to, to hold at those uh, at those levels and here we've got you know the volume weighted average price uh, and let's just draw these in together because just clear this chart off a little bit the volume weighted average price since the October lows in um, in the NASDAQ, we can see here, uh, we, we, we cut through that this morning. So it, it's about $60.78. The 200-day moving average is still below us in the NASDAQ, down at about $59.77 is what uh, this real tick is showing. And if we took a look at uh, Fibonacci lines and drew them off of the October lows to this year's high, you can see that uh, the 50% retracement down at about 59.5. So maybe this market needs to go down to 59.5 to uh, 60 uh, in in order to find uh, 59 and a half to 59.75, that is the 50% retracement uh, area to the 200-day uh, moving average, uh, before it can settle in and find a little bit of support. You can see that last year the fourth quarter highs were also right about in that area as well. So there's a potential level uh, of support for the Nasdaq that maybe we're going to continue down to that. The point is we're not trying to pick the exact turning point. We're looking to say, okay, where is there likely to be evidence that the the that shorts will begin to cover their positions, that some longs will come and nibble, and maybe this market will begin to sta stabilize. It's going to take a bit of work here before we get a, a real uh, uh, bottom in this market that can you know, lead to a sustainable uptrend. I, I see all the time people talking about short squeezes. And you have to remember there's two types of short squeezes. There's a structural short squeeze where a stock like, let's say, um, uh, Lululemon last year, uh, or, you know, earlier this year, the shorts were stuck in this thing. They thought it was going to be broken down. The stock was in an uptrend, and the shorts structurally were positioned in the wrong way. Then you have other short squeezes, uh, which I like to just call a knee-jerk short squeeze. That people get all excited about every time there's a little bit of news in a stock like Research in Motion. And we've seen a lot of these bounces in here, and a lot of rumors. Last, uh, you know, two weeks ago, the rumor in Research in Motion was that hey, Facebook is going to buy the with all their IPO cash and of course that you know that uh, little rally quickly failed and here we are down at 10 bucks a share so these uh, knee-jerk short squeezes like WPRT you see people going oh the shorts are getting squeezed the shorts are correctly positioned in a stock like WPRT they're cor correctly positioned in a stock like soda uh, that reported earnings uh, a week and a half ago and this is a, a bigger rally than it might look like but you know the stock was in a downtrend and it gap from about 20 nine bucks a share up to 37 and it's just been bleeding off since then the shorts have been correct now they had to experience quite a bit of pain there on that day but 
again, there's, you know, be aware that this market is not going to squeeze higher except for maybe a short-term intraday period. It's not, it's not in a structurally sound position. The Russell 2000, you know, it broke below this uh, head and shoulders pattern and, um, uh, a couple of weeks ago and the you know the height of this is 84 approximately to 78 we had spoken about this and how it seemed ridiculous that if you take the height of the pattern which is six points and subtract it from the breakdown point uh, for our price objective that will give us a, an objective of about 72 we thought that was kind of ridiculous and seemed far-fetched and pretty far away but you know this market is is quickly uh, zeroing in on that level and here we had the same thing you know prior support uh, in this this uh, uh, market acted as resistance is what's known as the return move to the neckline and once it returned to that neckline where we had the declining 20-day moving average uh, people really unloaded in the uh, in the Russell 2000 so yesterday right up to that five-day moving average and here you can see that this market is uh, you know again the, the, the sellers are uh, in control here we're beyond the the 200-day moving average we're beyond the 38.2% uh, percent fib um, you know, we're beyond the 50%. So maybe we're going for a 61.8% retracement before this market finds some support. That's right around, uh, in, I'm sorry, this would be the 50% level. Um, so here, I, I've got too many lines on there. This would be 38.2 and there would be 50%. Um, and that's where the measured move gives us our objective as well. The volume weighted average price in the Russell, uh, we've, you know, we've got that up about 76.35 since the October lows. So this market is really Really, you know, there's no sign of a bottom in here, so don't be a try to be a hero and look to get involved at cheap prices. You'll see that the market gives you time to turn. And one of the disturbing signs for this market is is really the semiconductors. The semiconductors, you know, broke that important support at about 32 and a half a couple weeks ago, and since it broke that level, uh, th you know, 33 really, uh, it, we saw a return move in there, and then just uh, you know, the market found resistance at the 200-day moving average and really got the snot kicked out of today down 3.7 percent and again year to date these semiconductors are now down 1.7 percent so the semiconductors often lead the nasdaq they've been the weakest here and it spells that there's you know likely still trouble coming for the uh for the queues and that makes it, it it reasonable to think that we could get a test of that uh 57 i'm sorry 59 and a half to 59.75 in the nasdaq based on the way these semiconductors refuse to find any uh, support shorts aren't covering buyers aren't coming in uh, etc the financials really got uh, hit hard as well this was the range that we had been in, involved in uh, about 1375 up to uh, $14.25 yesterday we had a, a stronger day and um, today obviously we gapped down to the low end and through the low end of that range and closed pretty much right on the lows here so the the XLF uh, you know bearish flag in here as well all these markets are, are just structurally uh, still still weak, and uh, I like the quote. I don't remember who said it. There's there's no fundamentals in a foxhole. It might have been Stock Sage, Robert Sin. Um, but anyways, we've got meaning that the fund you, you can look at the fundamentals. But when people are just throwing st stocks away here because of fear, um, the fundamentals aren't going to do you any good. They're going to become oversold to more oversold, etc. The uh, uh, retracement levels here on the uh, financials they've retraced 50%. Um, the volume weighted average price since the October low has been uh, obliterated as well, up at 1390. So we're going to need to see a lot of uh, recovery for this market to uh, to write itself back up it's going to take uh, you know again if they don't scare you out they're typically going to wear you out that was something I was talking about in uh, win a lot of people were looking for a bounce in win a couple days ago and you know these are broken stocks they simply are not uh, they're not going to turn around except for maybe a, a, a little bit of a, a short squeeze uh, you know knee-jerk short squeeze stocks like uh, you know Cliff's drilling Cisco systems there's you know decimation in every industry 
industry. We look at Decker's shoes, and of course, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters uh, continues to be a, 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 a difficult stock for the longs. F5, the, the, the damage is broad, it's diverse, it's uh, hitting uh, the, the uh, so-called enemies like Goldman Sachs and all the other banks and JP Morgan, etc. There's just a, uh, a, a heightened sense of risk, and during these environments, it's most important to remain uh, very cautious and defensive and preserve your capital for when the market makes it a little bit easier for whatever style it is uh, that, that works well for you. If it's the short side that works well for you, then I'm sure you're enjoying this market quite a bit. Uh, that'll do it. Hope you have a good weekend. Thanks for tuning in.